Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. However, I can be a supplement to your own scripture study. My focus is to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of those things that are true. I'll be reading and expounding from the Book of Mormon, but we can get into other scriptures at a later time. So today's number is 24 verses. This will be medium, like popcorn popping on the apricot tree. Third Nephi, chapter 15. Jesus announces that the law of Moses is fulfilled in him. The Nephites are the other sheep of whom he spake in Jerusalem. Because of inequity, the Lord's people in Jerusalem do not know of the scattered sheep of Israel. Verse 1, And now it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, he cast his eyes round about on the multitude and said unto them, Behold, ye have heard the things which I have taught before I ascended to my Father. Therefore, whoso remember these sayings of mine and doeth them, him will I raise up at the last day. And it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he perceived that there were some among them who marveled and wondered what he would concerning the law of Moses. For they understood not the saying that old things had passed away and that all things have become new. And he said unto them, Marvel not that I said unto you that old things have passed away and that all things have become new. Behold, I say unto you that the law is fulfilled that was given unto Moses. Behold, I am he that gave the law and I am he who covenanted with my people Israel. Therefore, the law in me is fulfilled, for I have come to fulfill the law. Therefore, it hath an end. Behold, I do not destroy the prophets, for as many as have not been fulfilled in me, verily I say unto you, shall all be fulfilled. And because I said unto you that old things have passed away, I do not destroy that which hath been spoken concerning these things, which are to come. For behold, the covenant which I have made with my people is not all fulfilled. But the law, which was given unto Moses, have an end in me. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me and endure to the end, and ye shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end will I give eternal life. Behold, I have given unto you the commandments. Therefore, keep my commandments. And this is the law and the prophets, for they truly testified of me. So quickly to expound on here, as you can see, this is something that tripped the people up. So again, before the Savior's birth and preparatory for him arriving to the people in Jerusalem, there was a law of Moses. So to help people focus on that preparation and help them to be ready for when he appears. But al along with that, you can see how sometimes we may get into certain modes, you can say, where we're not willing to open ourselves up. We get cl so closed off that we're not willing to come and see or to look or to ponder, to study. We should not be so closed off like that. And the Savior's helping them to understand and really making it clear. He gave the law of Moses, y'all. It is him. He fulfilled the things that he gave to them. So you got to understand about prophets. They will only say things given to them by Heavenly Father and the Savior. So he's teaching them that Specific things in the law of Moses, again, were fulfilled because of him. Specifically, the atonement. We don't need to do burnt offerings and we don't need to do sacrifices anymore because the Savior himself gave his life. Everything the Savior did fulfilled the everlasting sacrifice, you can call it. So that's the thing I take from this that can really make people hesitate to change, you can say. And there's also those people that just don't like change. But the Savior is saying, always focus on the things he has taught. But as well, we have the Holy Spirit, y'all. Anytime there's something new, anytime there's something that we need to do differently, the Holy Spirit is there to testify of those things. When you're doing something wrong or you're doing something incorrect, you will not have the Spirit with you. That's how you know you're going down the wrong path. But if you have the spirit with you and you're being guided and directed, you know those things are good and you know they are true. So in anything you do in your life, this is why the gift of the Holy Ghost is so precious. 
that we get after baptism because we can literally feel when we're going down the wrong path again. We can literally feel when we're going down the right path. So that's key to keep in mind. Verse 11. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he said unto those twelve whom he had chosen, Ye are my disciples, and ye are a light unto this people, who are a remnant of the house of Joseph. And behold, this is the land of your inheritance, and the Father hath given it unto you. And not at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell it unto your brethren at Jerusalem. Neither at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell unto them concerning the other tribes of the house of Israel, whom the Father hath led away out of the land. This much did the Father command me, that I should tell unto them that other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And now because of the stiff neckedness and unbelief, they understood not my word. Therefore I was commanded to say no more of the Father concerning this thing unto them. But verily I say unto you that the Father hath commanded me, and I tell it unto you that ye were separated from among them because of their inequity. Therefore it, next page over, is because of their inequity that they know not of you. And verily I say unto you again, that the other tribes have the Father separated from them, and it is because of their inequity that they know not of them. This is clear to understand, and we get the answer, specifically when you go back to the be very beginning of the Book of Mormon, the first chapter in First Nephi, when Lehi is being directed to take his family out of Jerusalem. So as you can see here, the Savior is making it known to us if we didn't already know and making it clear if it wasn't clear that it was because of their inequity. And Lehi also prophesied and taught that as well because Jerusalem is going to be destroyed because of their wickedness. But the Savior is saying specifically, there are people that are doing righteousness that the Father has led out of those places or out of those specific locations, you can say, where the other people were doing wickedness. So he's separating the people because those that are doing wickedness, let them remain and he's going to wipe them out. So he's saving the other people so they don't get destroyed. But obviously, if those people wouldn't have listened, like you can say, um, Lehi warned them. Again, Lehi is a prophet. Lehi warned them, y'all need to leave Jerusalem. And if the people that didn't listen or they didn't repent as well, what happened? They got destroyed. So the Savior is showing us that, but also to keep in mind, this is a little nugget here. There's a lot of nuggets throughout all scriptures, but specifically right here, we're being taught that there's not one people. There's not one group, y'all. So keep that in mind. Those two things to remember. There's not one set of people. There's not one specific group. There's a multitude of people. Folds, he calls them. He is the good shepherd, but there's multiple folds. So because of that, we need to be open to that understanding because there could be other experiences, other scriptures, you can say, of other people in different situations that we have nothing that we know about them. But obviously, when anything is being called scripture, the Holy Spirit would testify of these things. So this is something that trips people up still nowadays. They had the Bible, or you can say we have the Bible. And then boom, we got the Book of Mormon. And we're trying to bring that to other people and help them to understand. And they're like, oh, no, we don't need no other Bible. We, we don't believe in that type of stuff. They're so closed off that they're missing on the beauty. I will repeat, the beauty of the Book of Mormon, the things it expounds on, the thing that helps us to understand better. It doesn't replace the Bible. Neither does the Bible replace the Book of Mormon. They go together similar to what the savior is saying multiple folds but one shepherd y'all he is the good shepherd again and so because of that we encourage people to read read the whole book of mormon don't be those type of people that's like oh, i don't believe in the book of mormon you know yeah it's nothing and you didn't even read it that's like saying the bible is not true but you didn't even read the bible so that's why we encourage people to read all of it and while I have this moment, I would say specifically, 
when I started reading the Book of Mormon, I would say the first 90 chapters, within 90 chapters, if you don't feel the spirit and you don't feel that it is true, you need to really open yourself up and you need to really be pleading with the Father to know that it is true, to feel the Holy Spirit. But I give people this promise, within 90 chapters of reading the Book of Mormon, you will know that it is true. But ultimately, you wanna read the whole thing and pray at the end with the promise. But I know for myself personally, definitely within those 90 chapters, and specifically you say, if we went even further, finishing the book of Alma Jr., if you don't feel and you don't recognize that these things are holy and they are true, you are either not opening yourself or you're so closed off that the spirit is not able to reach you. So you have to open yourself up and you have to be willing to fill the spirit and willing, willing to learn the truth. Verse 21. And verily I say unto you, that ye are they of whom I said, of the sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And they understood me not. For they supposed it had been the Gentiles, for they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. And they understood me not that I said they shall hear my voice. And they understood me not that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice, that I should not manifest myself unto them, save it were by the Holy Ghost. This is important to understand here, y'all. Very important. Specific things with the Savior's teaching us. We all should know that it goes from Jews to Gentiles, Gentiles to Jews. So what that means here specifically, again, a Gentile is somebody that's not a Jew. And what the Savior is teaching us here is that the Jews brought forth the Bible. We thank them. We need the Bible. We're happy to have the Bible. We study the Bible. Now, since the Jews did that, and specifically right here what the Savior said, he did not manifest himself onto the actual actual Gentiles. Besides, you can say Joseph, the prophet Joseph Smith Jr. receiving the vision of the father and the son appearing to him. But specifically what the Savior is saying, walking among them. So the Savior walked among the Jews, specifically in Jerusalem, but then also at this point where he was resurrected among the Nephites and the Lamanites. Now, going back to my illustration about Jews to the Gentiles, Gentiles to the Jews. Again, the Jews brought the Bible, brought that Bible to the Gentiles. And so now the Gentiles have the Bible, which is myself. I'm a Gentile. I'm not a Jew. So the Jews, you can say specifically to me, they brought me the Bible. I'm a Gentile. I receive the Holy Ghost, like he's saying. I did not have the Savior specifically appear to me like he did to the Jews. However, the Holy Spirit is united with the Savior and the Father. So because the Holy Ghost has appeared to me and manifest to me and taught me these things are true, it is equal in a way to the Savior himself appearing. Obviously, it is better to have the Savior right in front of you than to have the Holy Ghost, not to disrespect or discredit the Holy Ghost, but we know how we we classify them, you can say in a way, but classify may not be the specific word. You can say how we understand the order. There's a Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Again, three separate beings united, but ultimately we look at the Father as our primary, and then the Son, and then the Holy Ghost. But along with that, when you have the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost testifies about the Son and the Father, you become united with them. And so that's what he's teaching. Again, I'm a Gentile. I did not have the Savior appear to me, but the Holy Ghost has manifest these things that are true onto me and fulfilling this promise and this illustration what he's teaching us right here. So since I'm a Gentile and I know the Bible is true, but I also know the Book of Mormon is true. So now it's my responsibility as a Gentile to bring the Book of Mormon to the Jews who know the Bible is true and thereby goes back to that illustration. Jews and the Bible, 
to the Gentiles. They bring that to the Gentiles. Gentiles in the Book of Mormon bring that to the Jews, uniting the Bible and the Book of Mormon, both the Holy Word of God. Verse 24, but behold, ye have both heard my voice and seen me, and ye are my sheep, and ye are numbered among those whom the Father hath given me. And that concludes the chapter, and I'll wrap up with my testimony. That I know the Holy Spirit is real, and that we can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Only way to do that is to be baptized with that proper authority and have hands laid upon our head by the priesthood, Melchizedek priesthood, which is real, and to be given that precious gift. I testify that those of us that are not baptized, we can receive manifestations of the Spirit here and there. But if we want the Holy Spirit to be with us on an everyday basis, to be constant in our lives, to be a scepter, of truth and light, we need to be baptized, we need to be repenting daily, and we need to receive that gift again. I testify that the atonement is real and opens all the doors, all the possibilities for us to return to heaven and to have eternal life. If we use our agency, which is also a gift, the freedom to choose, to choose the Savior and not choose the devil, we will have that gift of eternal life which is also the ultimate goal. I leave y'all with my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.